In a recent op-ed in USA Today, the president of St. Mary's College of Maryland, Dr. Tawanda Jordan, wrote about how she faced head-on America's and her own institution's painful history with slavery. Weeks ago, the college marked the first anniversary of a black monument. It's called the Commemorative to Enslaved Peoples of Southern Maryland. Recently, I spoke with Dr. Jordan about why it was built and its importance. So a few years ago, you were faced with a dilemma. The university planned to build an athletic facility, but an archeologist discovered that on the proposed building site, there was evidence of slave quarters from two centuries, two separate centuries actually. As the most influential representative of the college interest, as an educator and as a black woman, could you categorize your initial thoughts about that discovery? Uh, I was um, I was taken aback. Right? Um, as I've said before, that oftentimes, even though I know that the college is in Southern Maryland and Maryland has a history in slavery, somehow I had hoped in my deepest heart that our college, which has been progressive since the very beginning, had managed to stay out of that that endeavor, um, to put it um, nicely. And so I realized that it was our opportunity to do something that was important and profound in a way that let people know that we understand that we had a role there, but and that we're not saying that what we did was right. And how do we try to tell the story in such a way that those who were enslaved are honored and recognized for what they had to endure there? I went to school at University of Maryland in College Park. And so I know a little bit about, about the, the Maryland history there. And what a lot of people don't know is that it was ground zero for the slave trade. The Underground Railroad, you know, kind of went right through there. And if you could just give a little bit more context um, to your college town and the role that it played, uh, I think that'd be mm -hmm. interesting to hear. Okay, um, St. Mary's College of Maryland is located in St. Mary's City, Maryland. And St. Mary's City is the first capital of um, Maryland and um, in one way, we always talk about St. Mary's City being the site of um, religious toleration. That is something that the, the city and the county is very proud of. And we talk about, you know, Lord Calvert and really this being one of the seats of democracy as we know it in this nation. One of the things that we always talk about in the telling of that history is what the colonists did, and we usually describe them in St. Mary's City as being um, settlers. But how you think of a settler versus how you think of a colonist, those are two different things. And the, the history mm. in this area was always told from that of the colonists. And there were always one or two people of color that was mentioned but they never tell about the role of the enslaved in helping to build this place. They never talk mm. about really, you know, what happened to the indigenous people. So it was an opportunity to add another layer, so to speak, to the telling of the history of this place um, and to really give people an opportunity to pause, to think about what else am I missing? I mean, up the road from where the mm -hmm. college is, it's historic Sodderley Plantation. And Sodderley's done an excellent job with talking about, you know, it wasn't just plantation life, but in their narrative, they talk about the plantation owners and the enslaved. But that was up the road, mm. right? If we are the site yeah. of democracy and there were colonists here, that means there were other people here and other people had to help build this nation. And so it was an opportunity for St. Mary's College to be part of that in the retelling of the history. I just get goosebumps thinking about this, you know, because here you are on this uh, history, rich or not, uh, of this, this land and, and of this town. And here you are as a black woman now, the head 
of this college, this university. And I just wonder personally how, you know, you, you process all of this in a role that the, 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 the ancestors who literally, um, you know, tilled that soil there could not ever have imagined that a black person would, would now be in this role. It's a heavy lift, right? The, the burden is there all the time. And, you know, there's a one on the cabin on a commemorative, you know, we have erasure poetry where the voices of the enslaved are brought forth from original slave documents. And on one of the panels, it says, um, it is essentially about remembering their toil by telling their stories, right? And mm. as a as a black woman leading this institution, I walk a fine line, right? Um, it is important for me to use my platform, so to speak, to try to tell the the truth, right? And but then again, you don't want to be known as the one who's always talking about race um, because that puts you in a corner. So I try to speak the truth as truthfully as I can using data, because I'm a biochemist, um, but then at the mm -hmm. same time balancing that with the, um, the, the emotion and the toil this has played on humanity. I don't know if that makes any sense mm. to any of you, but- um, It sure does. I have a great responsibility um, to this nation, so to speak, right? To try to enrich the history with respect to the telling of the founding of democracy in this nation. I have a responsibility to make sure that my students are educated fully so they can go out to be impactful global citizens. And the one way you do that is to have an enriching education that exposes you to the truth and that you, as the student, use your mind to go through it and make the hopefully right de uh, decisions as to what it is you should yeah. be doing to help humanity prevail. And, and at the time that you're doing this, of course, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, all the uh, unrest of, of 2020 and mm -hmm. the fight over the Confederate monuments coming down. And I wonder, in your experience, has the this commemorative monument, uh, has it been able to spark any healing? It, it sparks lots of feelings um, to different people. I, you know, the, the reason we put it where we put it is to give people pause, right? You go past and you see this nice shiny building and it's like, oh, what is that? You go there and you read and it should, what we wanted to do is to make you reflect on yourself and what you're doing in this world, but to think about what happened in the past, how it impacts the present and what is your role in helping this place become better in the future. So I, you, what we find is wow. that lots of people who go there, some people just go around it very quickly and say, oh, that's pretty. Um, they don't do much. But many people pause and actually think about it, and they come back again and again. And every time you come back, you see it in a different light, and it should make you think about this and inspire you to help us get to a better place. Dr. Tawanda Jordan, president of uh, St. Mary's College there in Maryland, thank you so much for the work that you're doing and, and the courage that you have to tell these stories that we don't always get to hear. Appreciate you for joining us on Amplified. Thank you so very much for having me. I wish you all the best.